Excellent. Welcome to Tech Summit Innovators. We have Dan Jenkins on today. Dan, welcome. How are you doing? I am fantastic. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And of course, Johnny. How are you, Johnny? I'm doing good. I'm just a little story from the, the Twilio news uh, yes. with the activists. And and uh, so we're going to take that up later. Yeah, um, we'll not hijack our innovators. So, Dan, maybe yeah. introduction to yourself and some of the things you're getting up to. Great. Um, so, yeah, I'm Dan, Dan Jenkins. Um, I've run a consulting business for the past 10 years or so um, called Nimble Ape Limited out, out of the UK. We specialize in offering real-time communication consultancy, open media consultancy, that kind of stuff. Um, whether or not it's web-based, whether or not it's VoIP-based, WebRTC, everything in between. Yeah. Um, so we've been doing that for 10 years and um, yeah, doing it very, very successfully, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and then uh, I also run a conference called ComCon. So this year we are going on tour. So we're in London and we're in San Francisco. 5th and 6th of June, 12th and 13th of June, uh, sorry, 5th and 6th of June in London, 12th and 13th of June in San Francisco. We're doing a one-day hackathon and one-day conference at both places. So if you can't come over to the to the UK from, from, from the US, then go over to San Francisco. If you're in Europe or wherever and you want to come over to London, then, then do that. Trying to make it as, as, as accessible to, to everyone as possible and, and for for our audience uh, wh why do they want to come i mean just to, why, it, it, why do they want to come world-class speakers so being able to actually you know and and the speakers don't disappear the speakers don't disappear so if you want to come be able to spend quality time with some of the best quality people in real-time media within open media then then come to come come real-time media real-time media um so yeah, historic people that have spoken are like Tim Panton, um, Renan from from Cloudflare. Cloudflare are hosting us this year. Um, David Duffett, all, all the all the legendary VoIP people, as well as a load of WebRTC people. And then we kind of last year we started doing more open media stuff as well. SRT, Anycast distribution, that kind of stuff. So. Mm. Boatload of stuff, boatload of boatload of good content from from a from kind of media in general. Um, no one else is really doing media in general. Everyone kind of still specialises, right? And that's how media used to be, right? Media used to be real time and traditional, i.e., video delivery, Netflix, Apple TV, that kind of stuff, right? And then you'd have tr uh, then you'd have real time media people who go, ah. We deliver media in like 40 milliseconds, right? And your real time isn't my real time. But because of the pandemic, everything started shifting and everyone wanted to do more of like more of each other's stuff because, you know, well, I'm playing a video, but we want to get real time engagement with our friends, that kind of stuff. And that was really key in the pandemic, but like it's carried on since. Yeah. And so... That's where like people like Mux start. Mux went and bought a, a web RTC company. They've now got rid of it, but so that's another that's another yeah. issue, right? But the fact is, we're all kind of merging into this media industry rather than there being different industries. Yeah. Um, so I think we are probably one of the first to really kind of take that and go. You, everything is is combined. Um, to the degree that we have. So so that's a really good reason to come. Yeah. Yeah, a good mm. example is uh, I, you can be running a, uh, you know, a, a video conference and you can live stream it as well. Now, the video conferences, that's optimized around as real time as possible. And then you might use like uh, YouTube or something for doing that live stream portion. Now, there's always a big delay around that so then you've got the sort of uh, you know but it, it's when i say big delay you know it, it's a few seconds of delay you know so this you know it, it's grown in importance and let's face it you know uh, google have closed down their podcasts because they're just consolidating everything onto uh, youtube youtube is you know becoming you know what the place to be around uh, podcasts and it's got the whole advertising engine around it. It's just got so many pieces that make it such censorship. 
<laughs> I know. But, but, Johnny but was like, they're censoring this, Alan. We've got to move off. We've got to move off to let that. Me, let, me just, let me just pick at the gentleman here. I, I, so I was watching this, this uh, the Daily Show with John Stewart about AI and jobs and this and that. So, so basically, this because basically half our industry is going to lose their jobs. This is a place where people can come and learn and network as well and yes. be able to find because you know, obviously, you know, real time media is is broad and it's big and it's here. Um, I mean, so is this somewhere where maybe we could help market it to? a community that's going to be losing their jobs to AI. If, if you listen to everybody else, everybody's just getting rid of people, but real time media, that's not going to happen. These are, these are. But no, no yeah. it, it's it. ultimately ComCon has always been about community. Right. And so like the way that ComCon historically has been run, everyone would get into one hotel and you'd be kind of forced. I'm air quoting forced to stay in this hotel with everyone else. Um, and some people went, oh, that's that's a terrible idea. I really want to go stay at the cheaper hotel down the road. But but you miss out on all of the awesome conversations that happen, you know, in the bar at you know eight o'clock at night when the conference that's pretty cool. is over. Cool. So we're not doing residential this year because of you know the worldwide economy. Um, however, we don't want to lose what ComCon is, and so ultimately it's still going to be community, community, community. It's still going to be, you know, being able to go and meet people and actually form form proper relationships with people. Cool. cool. Alan, don't show up with your Dr. Spock outfit. Okay. At this one. No. no. <laughs> and, then, and then finally... And then every cast. Finally, every cast labs. Um, so, um, yeah, busy, busy guy with lots of things going on. Um, but every cast labs, we've got a product called Broadcast Bridge. Um, and, and ultimately it's designed to be able to bring in remote collaborators, remote talent, um, that's the proper term for it, um, within that industry, um, being able to bring them in and put them into a production AV workflow that already exists in the format that they want it in. So production people want it in like SDI or, or output via SDI, whether or not that, or, or, or even NDI. Mm -hmm. Um, and so as well as loads of other things like SRT. Yeah. Um, and so it really depends what they want it in. And, and ultimately, we're making it very easy for you to be able to bring in someone and put them within your existing workflow in good quality. Yeah. Um, not the best quality, because the best quality doesn't bring ease of being able to just open up a browser and go, right, there's my remote person. Exactly. Um, yeah. But ultimately, we want to get away from people using Zoom and screen, screen grabbing Zoom and, and like... Every single time you see someone on the news that comes in remotely and just have a look in the bottom left corner and you will at some point see their name tag. Yeah. And that's because they're using Zoom or they're using Teams or Skype or something like that. Yeah. Um, and there we we produce ISO feeds and without the Chrome, the Chrome is the added stuff. Yeah. And so we can produce ISO feeds and they, then they get put into the, the workflow that already exists. Gotcha. Um, so that's that's the primary goal of 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 oh I'm sorry that's my that's my nest alarm in the background <laughs> doing a test. Um, so um, yes, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so yeah, the that's, sort that, of work, that's broadcast so it, bridge is the primary thing. Gotcha. Now the use cases you implement around. I mean, do you enable like really low latency for like if you have musical collaboration stuff like that? Yeah, so ev everything is driven with WebRTC at its heart. Yeah. Um, we do accept other things as well, like you can do SRT ingress and um, yeah, yeah. because people expect that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but at its heart is WebRTC. Yeah. And so, yeah, everything is... That is possible ideally, within, you can, gotcha. 40 milliseconds to, you know, 80 milliseconds away from, from someone, depending on the speed of light from A to B. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and then there's all the buffering and all the rest, but uh, yeah, exactly. I understand. What it's you're all, yeah, it's all designed to be like, we don't do any mixing. That's a really good, it, oh, that's, a way, that, that's a good way of putting okay. it. We okay. don't do any mixing at all. And gotcha. so we take a stream yep. and deliver it to the right person at the right time. In Understood. the right time that they want it in. Gotcha. We don't, we don't actually do any mixing at all. Understood. So that's why your focus is on then pumping that into a particular work stream. So yeah. whether it's a collaboration or whether it's something more mundane, like an interview or whatever, or just getting remote 
feed in, whether it could be sort of A or B role. It doesn't matter. You just exactly excellent. Oh, so these companies that are using Zoom, which I thought was the only thing you could use, um, why aren't they using you? It's just marketing or just awareness or just morons like me that think, hey, Zoom. It's it's a bit of everything, to be perfectly honest with you. We we end up having conversations with, you know, event companies or broadcasters. And um, and they say, well, why would we use you when we've got the likes of Zoom? Um, and so ultimately, like, it's seen as better quality. And as soon as you use the word WebRTC, it's got this, like, negative connotation against it. Um, and, and that's something that I'm trying to trying to get rid of yeah. as, as we go along this journey, trying to teach people. Um, but ultimately, yeah, Zoom has this, you know, iconic brand around it, especially because of the pandemic. Um, and then Teams has Microsoft behind them, for example. So you get into this small, small company versus big company. It doesn't necessarily matter whether or not it's the right tool for the right job. Why, why, why not do a rebrand? Why you know, not something do... that's, that's, I'm, I mean, that, am I just being nuts? Yeah, I mean, if, if, if somebody, if people have the perception that WebRTC is one thing and it's really not, I mean, is that something that's just nuts, what it's, I'm saying? It, or... I mean, so it, it's it's difficult. Um, like, ultimately, something that I will be talking about at a conference soon, I think, um, is is about WebRTC versus uh, Quick and yeah. Media over Quick or RTP over Quick or whatever ends up being the thing, right? Yeah. And, and why would you why would you use Media over Quick over WebRTC? I mean, at the moment, then there's not really a comparison. However, people have already started planting the seeds of well, Media over Quick is going to give you better quality. Um, is going to be able to mm. do this be able to do that and so to a degree there's already this kind of rebrand and new technology that's already happening um ultimately people see webrtc as well ultimately webrtc is something that is real time yeah and so ultimately if you lose a video frame or you know part of it the most important thing is to carry on right because you're in a real-time conversation yeah and so it's not necessarily teaching people, you know, WebRTC is not bad. It's, well, why do you have this illusion that, say, things like Zoom or Teams don't already have these problems? Exactly. Because right? they do. Like, you can lose data and you then you can't re-get re re it. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then, and ultimately, no one truly notices apart from the geeks in the audience. Um, so but another it's, factor it's, about, it's about teaching. Exactly. But just moving it away from the discussion around quality, one of the reasons that the BBC, oh, we may have lost him. He may, there I'm you back. go. You're back. You're back. There you go. He's using Zoom. We're using Zoom. Exactly. And a great example. <laughs> but the client is there and people are used to using it. You know, because uh, with you, I'm assuming it's a browser. WebRTC is in that browser, so you just need to have you know the re relevant. You get given a URL, browser. and that's it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whereas everyone's got you know actually no, I I was about to say everyone's got the Zoom app on their phone. They don't actually. No. no. Most people have a Zoom app on their on their desktop. Correct. But very few people actually have Zoom on their phone. Yes, that's correct. Well, because depending on the phone you've got, you know, it's a pretty heavy draw <laughs> on the processor you know i yeah. mean iphone it is better and then you start to feel sorry that you've got an android uh when you're using zoom because that just eats the battery like crazy it's just ridiculous but cool so it's just a url now i i i, I guess you know there's a safety net i guess partially in the fact that people are used to using zoom or they're used to using Teams. Now, Teams works great within an organization that likes to talk to itself. It's not that great when it talks to other people. So yeah. I, I, from my perspective, Teams falls as soon as you want to talk to somebody external. You know? Oh, we're losing. Oh, you. We'll just hang a sec. There you go. You're back now. Back now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, whenever someone sends me a, 
uh, Teams invite. Um, I do have Teams installed on my machine. Mm -hmm. However, um, every single time I get a, a Teams invite, I say, no, I won't open it because opening it in the browser is the only way that I'm going to be able to join that session. Yes. Because the desktop app gets very confused yeah. about, well, you're not in my organization. And so you can't do that. Um, yeah. Teams is Teams is horrific um, yes. to be. And, and that's putting it bluntly, to 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 be honest. Um, Wholeheartedly I agree. Hate it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Cool. So uh, interested in, you know, because I back when I used to work at BT Labs, did a lot of work with the BBC and, you know, the, the culture that's there. I guess your focus is more events companies than broadcasters? Yeah, at the moment, we're going more after events companies that are doing hybrid stuff gotcha. um, but versus um, versus broadcasters. Broadcasters is where we ultimately want to be. Yeah. Um, but I keep getting the whenever we talk to a potential broadcaster, like they they say, oh, yeah, we were working on something like this during the pandemic. And then like you go, that's great. Let's let's move on. And they're like, well, so and so and so and so like we've yeah. already discussed. So um, yeah, our primary target at the moment is events companies that 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 want to do stuff well and yeah. don't want to do all of these hacky solutions. Gotcha. Um, like during the pandemic, you'd I'd see pictures of rows of laptops, and and it, you'd bring everyone in on a Zoom call or whatever, and you'd 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 have a, a laptop per person that was in that Zoom call, and yeah. you'd pin them to the screen, and yep. then you'd then you'd capture the screen and then you'd create your 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 event um so there are there are teams that are good good events companies um that want to do the best quality media that they can yeah and so th those are really the ones that we are that we're targeting uh, gotcha. at average yeah. understood yeah i'm trying to remember the name of the company that during the pandemic was doing the um, wrestling matches and you know all the custom stuff they built up and yeah they were web rtc based as well and then basically combining it all up so it was just massive screens that they pl play so that there was a real audience interacting with the wrestlers that were performing in a uh, studio yeah so. exactly and it's still happening today it's not just a pandemic thing oh. i saw a picture the other day i can't remember exactly where it was in the world um but there was this chair in the middle of a studio and then all around this chair was basically this this wrap around digital LED display, gotcha. and so they'd bring in these hundreds, thousands of people from their homes. I think it was somewhere in in the in the east somewhere, yeah, um, Philippines maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and and they'd put the whole audience, this whole virtual audience, yeah, like wrap around, and yeah. and, and they'd be part of they'd be part of the whole show. And I found it fascinating because i haven't seen very much of it since the pandemic yeah um there was there was like that that wrestling stuff like where they'd bring in a remote audience for like ellen or whatever and oh. there'd be tv screens in in the in the audience yep. for that um oh. or, or or you know the the provided by webex um the sponsored stuff that happened on american tv oh, that's right where, yes where you'd have a portrait portrait screen and then ellen or whoever it was was talking to a portrait screen yeah um so we've seen less and less of it in terms yeah. of like you know those kinds of events but there is still an awful lot of kind of hybrid stuff going on gotcha interesting <clears throat> cool and then where are you looking to take this product going forward oh that's an interesting question um, I, I'm brimming with ideas about what we can, what we, what other products we can offer. I mean, yeah. it, it's taken basically the, it's taken ten years to, well, nine years by the time that we actually kind of got got going with this properly. Um, I, I forever, I, I spent you know eight nine years developing products for diff, for other people with yeah. with Nimbleape, and um, I mean, I got. I, I still love consulting and I, if any of my clients are watching now um i still love consulting um <laughs> however you get to a certain age and you go well let's let's build a product for us instead and so it took it took eight years to kind of come, get to that point and go oh this is a really cool product and no one else is really doing it to the level that we can do it at mm -hmm. um so yeah 
I'm not entirely sure where we're going to go. Media yeah. over quick. So looking at some of the yeah. less of RTC focus, but just getting to the core, you know, at max quality, lowest latency. Potentially, yeah. I mean, from, from a technology perspective, absolutely. Like ultimately, ultimately we're not wedded to WebRTC, right? And yeah. it, it, it just it's gives handy. you yeah. it, it gives you the thing that you need today. Yeah. Um however, um is is that going to be the same thing tomorrow? Potentially not. However, media over quick is still far from being yeah. that thing, right? Yeah. Whether or not it even will be that thing, because yeah. um the whole thing during in the IETF has been very much concentrated on having something that replaces HLS or Dash yes. yeah. rather than replacing real-time collaboration. Exactly, yeah. In an ideal world, we'd have this thing that just works everywhere. Yep. I I struggle to go and build, you know, an HLS manifest file or whatever, because like it's it's <gasps> voodoo to me. Yes. Whereas someone that can do that struggles to come into WebRTC and do offer answer with SDP. What is this SDP thing? Right. <laughs> so like we've got yeah. these two different parts of the industry. And yeah. ideally we'd get to this really magical place where media over quick. Yep. just kind of works whether or not you're you know slightly delayed or whether or not you're doing real-time stuff the big thing about webrtc is it enables you to do peer-to-peer -peer stuff yeah ha that media over quick will never do correct however how many sessions how many webrtc sessions out on the internet are actually doing peer-to-peer -to -peer today mm -hmm. if you're doing gaming over data channel that kind of stuff yeah. you might be doing WebRTC proper peer to peer. Yeah. However, for most video, exactly whether or not you're doing Google Meet, Teams, whatever, right? Yeah, it's all going up to a server. That's and it. then yeah. distributed out, yeah. mixed or not mixed or whatever. Yeah. At which point, Media Over Quick is perfect for that. So, like, yeah, whether or not we end up with something else is entirely up for debate. Gotcha. Um, and and I, I I actually fear for. I fear for the say, uh, for the future of WebRTC. Oh, I I, I don't I think don't. I don't think we're going to get to a point where it just disappears. No. However, there are a ton of stuff coming to. Um, let's not say media over quick. Quick in general. Yeah. Web transports and web codec in the browser. Well, with web codec and web transport in the browser, you can connect your microphone and your camera, and do what you want with them. Right, you can go right. I'm going to encode it with this codec. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be baked into libwebrtc. It yeah. just right. You you are in control. Yeah. And and as long as you've got that codec in in WebAssembly or whatever, then you can do what you want with it. You can send it mm -hmm. how you want. Yep. That's great flexibility. If if WebRTC project doesn't doesn't kind of evolve a little bit. Yeah. And we're going to get into the realm of, well, I can do better quality stuff with codecs that I want to do stuff in. Let's say the new audio codecs that, you know, send very, very little data, but yeah. have brilliant quality. Yeah. Any of these new, you know, AI driven yeah. audio codecs that are coming exactly, out. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well, why wouldn't you go and use those? And today in WebRTC, you can't because they're not built into libwebrtc or they're not baked into the browser. Yeah. We need to get to a point with 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 webrtc in a browser where you can send data using web codec mm -hmm. using web, web assembly yeah. without having to lie about it in the sdp and everything else, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and so that that's that's one of the reasons why I'm scared about its future. Yeah. Uh, the other one is well if the likes of Google and Microsoft and Apple and Cisco, whoever, yep. go, well, we're going to go build our proprietary stuff on top of Media Over Quick. Or, yep. Right? Yeah. Well, where does all of the dev resource that was, you know, making WebRTC better and dealing, yeah. dealing with, you know, progressing it, where does that all go? Well, it goes away from WebRTC and WebRTC becomes this, not defunct, but legacy. I, I, I would liken it to Twilio Video <laughs> and, 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 and their end of life um, yes. being extended for two years. Yes. Why, exactly. why would you, you know, yeah. carry on doing Twilio Video for two years when 
well, two and a half years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, we, we now, unless you bought, unless you bought stock, unless you bought stock, right? <laughs> You're right. Um, but um, so, why would you stick with Twilio Video when you know that the service level isn't going to necessarily degrade because you know they've got paying customers on it? Yeah. But it's not going to get new features. It's not yeah. going to get you know new echo cancellation or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it, I liken WebRTC's future to potentially that. Why would you Good put one. more and more effort into it yeah. when big players have all left and gone and done their own thing? Done their own vertical. Exactly. That's interesting because the market has definitely matured. We're seeing a whole range of use cases where you know Google may take a different approach to Cisco, which would be more enterprise centric. You know, Apple does what Apple does, and Microsoft, well, it's just a horrible experience, so don't use it. Web WebRTC ultimately was a load of compromises. Yes. Brilliant compromises, right? Like yeah. at the end of the day, the whole the whole thing of you know interoperability went out the window because no one has no one ever in, no one ever interrupts on a signaling layer yeah. until very very recently with correct yeah. with and web right um, but and the, but ultimately they're 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 for basic use cases ultimately mm -hmm. um, no one no so the interrupt really never happened but yeah. the fact is you could go and you know create a connection and and it was going to work because there's you know we have to support H.264 and you have to support VP8. And you exactly. have to support Opus. And, yeah. and so it's going to work, right? Um, it, it was full of compromises. And that's why G711 <laughs> managed to make its way into the into the WebRTC spec. I know, crazy. Um, so that's the only reason G711 managed to get in. Um, but but for interop with the PSTN, air quotes, Um <laughs> Ultimately, yeah, that's Never a whole other happened. thing. Yeah, that's yeah. a whole other thing. Um, exactly. But um, with 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 big companies being able to go and do their own proprietary stuff built on top of Quick, well, they don't have to compromise. They can yep. do what they want. Exactly. Right. And this is where this is where Zoom actually started all of this. So Zoom in the browser started doing their own codec stuff. Yeah in 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 the browser with with web assembly assembly yeah um and then they'd send that that data over the web rtc data channel yeah and so they'd end up sending audio and video over the data channel i mean that sounds absolutely bananas but it gave them the control that they wanted and exactly. that's what, yeah. i won't say that's what started the whole journey with with web transport and web codec and, no. and quick but ultimately that was a big part in that yeah. That, that, that kind of spurred that whole thing on yeah. Um, yeah. with with the likes of the with chrome going right let's let's go and let's go and build this thing exactly exactly cool now this is really interesting discussion uh, you know, <laughs> looking to where this is going i think you know it, it's certainly been very insightful for me johnny do you have any other questions for dan yeah no look i'm, I'm fascinated i'm learning a lot over here um you know i saw uh, your new company so if WebRTC is going away. Where's your transition? Are you transitioning on top of what everybody else is doing, or are you moving in that direction, or where where's Dan going? Uh, I mean, ultimately, we've we've built so as 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 Nimble Eight and as Every Cast Labs, we've built very basic like proof of concepts for people for ourselves around around using Quick. Um, but you know, ultimately. If we want to be in every single browser today and support every single browser, then WebRTC is still the thing yeah. to use mm -hmm. because it's not there everywhere. Um, Quick isn't there everywhere, and, and media over Quick because you know I don't want to go build my own my own layer. Yeah, I want to use a standard. So what is that standard? Well, media over Quick is that standard, but you know media over Quick is still in its you know yeah. growing yeah. phase within exactly. the IETF. Yeah. Um and so will a small company such as um ourselves or um or or even you know larger companies that we help do consulting with am I am I encouraging any of them to go and you know spend time building their own thing on top of quick? The short answer is no mm -hmm. because ultimately you need, you know, hundreds slash thousands of developers building this base thing. Yeah. And if you've got this base spec, then then you can kind of go from there. 
but we're, we're still in the growing phase and, and things change a lot. Yeah. Um, and e even year on year. Mm -hmm. So um, th that's, that's why we're still building stuff off of WebRTC. And that's why you're seeing players like, um, that's why you're seeing players like Cloudflare come into the market with their um, stream product and their calls product that is still hugely WebRTC focused. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's a, it's a real shame that Twilio took the direction that they've taken with, with Twilio video. Um, because, well, I mean, the, yeah, the, 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 reason, the reasons for, the, the, the reasons for doing that are, are their own, right? Yeah. Um, but it's put this whole kind of question mark around, well, Twilio. Pure, Twilio purely financial. I, mean, I called them yeah. out this morning. Give me something. I'll let them know. I'm Twilio calling them out, out, out of this. Twilio, I'm pulling out of this, this, this WebRTC product. Does that mean that, you know, WebRTC is dying or whatever? No, it doesn't. No, it, it's exactly the reasons that you, that you do, that you describe. So um, no, I'm I'm very optimistic about the future of WebRTC in general. Mm -hmm. um, don't don't let my you know no, 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 no. teams like cloud that judgment. Um, but unless the product continues to progress, then exactly. then, then we'll, we'll we'll see potential pitfalls in the future. Exactly. But right now, build stuff with WebRTC. It's fat. It's bloody brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just awesome. that potential fragmentation in the future. That's all. It's just, you know, it's it's there as a potential out of, you know, and who knows, as you said, given the flexibility around the standards, it, it's it's a shell. And if enough of the community get behind it, you might find that that fragmentation starts to uh, disappear for the core product, right. you know, at least. But anyway, cool. This has been real fun. You know, we need to catch up more often, Dan. You know, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. This has been really insightful around what you're building, the challenges. And as always, we'll get this out and uh, promote all the stuff that you're doing, Dan. So again, yeah, and, so but, and before your conference, we'll start putting some stuff out too to the to our community. Thank uh, you so much. All over. Absolutely. No, awesome. Fifth, fifth and sixth of June in London and twelfth and thirteenth of June in San Francisco. Um, only a week apart from one another. And for the most part, the content is going to be completely different. Cool. Um, so they're, they're essentially two separate events. Why on earth I, I agreed to do two separate events within a week of each other that are mostly different? Yeah, I, I was going to ask you that, but uh, I don't me. want to like, be like, um, wow, why? But, but no, it's going to be brilliant. Cool. No, absolutely. You're going to, you're going to be tired. <laughs> <laughs> Those bags, they'll be drooping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but again, Dan, you take care. Thank you so much. Thank you.